Hello, Morgan Job here. Alright, continuing in our Biblical Easter Story devotion, today is Maundy or Holy Thursday. The word Maundy, which when translated from the Middle English word Mond, the Old French word Maundy, and the Latin word Mandatum, means commandment. This is in reference to Jesus' words in the book of John chapter 13 verse 34. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. This was after Jesus had washed the disciples' feet. More on this later. Today we look at when Jesus was betrayed and put on trial. The book of Luke chapter 22 verses 7 through 62 say, Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare it? they asked. He replied, As you enter the city, a man carrying a jug of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owner of the house. The teacher asks, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to that man who betrays him. A dispute arose among them as to which of them was considered to be the greatest. Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials. And I confer on you a kingdom just as my father conferred one on me, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you all as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail, and when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But he replied, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny three times that you know me. Then Jesus asked them, When I sent you without a purse bag or sandals, did you lack anything? Nothing, they answered. He said to them, But now if you have a purse, take it, and also a bag. And if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. It is written, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And I tell you, this must be fulfilled in me. Yes, what is written about me is reaching fulfillment. The disciples said, See, Lord, here are two swords. That's enough, he replied. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw away, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? he asked them. Get up and pray so that you do not fall into temptation. 
While he was still speaking, a crowd came up, and the man who was called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When Jesus' followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, should we strike with our swords? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. But Jesus answered, No more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple guard, and the elders who had come for him, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come with swords and clubs? Every day I was with you in the temple courts, and you did not lay a hand on me. But this is your hour when darkness reigns. Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. And when some there had kindled the fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was with him. But he denied it, Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later another asserted, Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Man, I don't know what you're talking about. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. So these verses state that the Passover was coming. It was a tradition to celebrate every year. But this year was different. This year Jesus was about to embark on a mission. Jesus was about to, wait a minute, spoiler alert, die on the cross and rise again and save mankind from the sin. This was his ultimate mission. Now the meals in that culture focused on the people who shared the meals rather than the food itself. This meant you really loved and trusted those who sat with you. Jesus does this, meaning that he really cared about his disciples. He wanted this Passover moment with his disciples to be intimate. One reason why Jesus wanted to spend these last moments with his disciples was to clue them into his soon crucifixion by using the Passover elements, wine and bread. Jesus wanted his disciples to remember that he gave up his life for them. And by doing so, he gave up his life for us as well. Just as the Israelite community always remembered how God freed Israel from slavery in Egypt, as it is written in the book of Leviticus chapter 16 verses 1 through 19, Jesus wanted the community of believers in him to remember his death and resurrection. A second reason why Jesus wanted to spend the Passover with his disciples was that he wanted to further his explanation on love. More on this in a bit. In this passage, Jesus is reminding his disciples that arguing about who is greater is selfish. This doesn't reflect Christ, but the world. Jesus talks about many who think like this. To act like someone is better than the other, abuse authority, and to seek power and title. Jesus says to not be like this. However, Jesus does indeed ask the question about who is greater. The one who is at the table or the one who is serving. The obvious answer is the one who is at the table. Jesus expresses that he came as a servant, and thus the answer is a servant. Jesus wanted his disciples to serve one another in love. He also wants us to do the same. When we live for Christ, we are to remember his death and resurrection, obey him and obey his command for us to love one another. In these verses, we see that Peter was saying that he was willing to go to prison and to die with Jesus. But Jesus tells Peter that he will deny him three times. And as we see later, Peter does indeed deny him three times. At that time, Peter's flesh overcame his faith and love for Christ. Sometimes I wonder if that's us. When it comes down to it, is our faith that weak? Will we deny Christ? We should be careful of that because denying Christ before mankind means that Christ will deny us before his Father. Now I believe that we could ask for forgiveness for this, just like I am sure Peter eventually did. This was just a point of weakness, but nonetheless we should be careful not to do it. Now this is pretty interesting. When Jesus and his disciples are on the Mount of Olives, he tells them to pray. Jesus, however, cautions them by saying, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. 
temptation in this case is probably what you have already guessed, sleep. Jesus told them not to fall asleep. Not because Jesus didn't care about the disciples' well-being, but so that they wouldn't desert Jesus when he was taken away. Alas, the disciples did fall asleep. But as with Peter, I think this was a point of weakness and Jesus forgave them. Seeing is how they interact and have a positive relationship after his death. Like I said in the beginning of this segment, the word Mondi means commandment. In the book of John chapter 13 verses 34 and 35, Jesus instills a new commandment, which is to love one another. Jesus commands all his followers not only to obey him, but also to obey his command to love. This will be how the world will know that we follow Christ. Backing up to verse 1 in John 13 it says, It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all these things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the table, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part in me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? he asked them. You call me teacher and lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set an example that you should do what I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. In this passage, Jesus demonstrates what true love looks like full of sacrifice and humility. If we truly follow Christ, we should take a cue from him and demonstrate love as he did. As it says in the book of 1 John, love is from God. If we do not love in this way, how do we expect to be welcomed into the kingdom of God? Christ teaches that everyone is the same. No human being is greater than the other. We are to be servants in our love for one another. So, some takeaways from these verses. 1. Love and obey Jesus. 2. Not only love but serve others in love. 3. Remember what Christ did for us. And 4. No matter how hard it may be, don't be afraid to stand up for Jesus. All scripture in this devotional is taken out of the New International Version of the Bible. The Biblical Easter Story devotional is copyrighted March 2021 by Mark and Job. The background music for this segment is provided with paid license by AudioJungle.net and AudioBlacks.com. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Jesus. He will show you a large room upstairs unfurnished. Unfurnished? No. All furnished. He will show you a large room upstairs unfurnished. He will show you a large room upstairs all furnished. Where is the Passover? This cup is... This cup is a new covenant in my blood. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with the tape. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. Uh, huh. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith had may not. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith will heal. If faith, faithful heal you? No. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. 
On reaching the place, he said to them, "Pray that you will not fall into temptation." On reaching the place, he said to them, "Pray that you will not fall into temptation." He withdrew about stone uh, throw. He withdrew about stone throw away. Peter replied, "Man, I don't know what you're talking about." Peter replied, "Man, I don't know what you're talking about." Man, I don't know what you're talking about. Jesus talks about many who's like Jesus talks about many who think like this.